All right. Welcome back. So, um, there's a bunch of floors, and you have an odd integer for which um, exactly two of the floors change, and you want to show that implies the integer was prime. Um, Okay. Hey, actually, is it true conversely that if it's prime, then only one of them changes? I have no idea. Okay, so here. If m is odd, then this one always changes, right? Because this is literally just n over 2. Um, floor n over 2. So when you have an odd integer... Um, so look at the change in each floor. Um, so floor of m plus 1 over 2 minus floor of m over 2 is always exactly 1 for m on. And then the question is, what else changes? I feel like I need to do like another couple more examples. Like, so the next term is this, like, um, yeah, let, let me just see what happens with the next few, all right? Dun, 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 dun. 2m over 5. So all these floors will always be at most 1, because you, the part that was inside the floor changed by, um, like, at, like, k over k squared plus 1 was the total change in... So in general, the part inside the floor changed by k over k squared plus 1, so it will... So the change on the floor will be either 0 or 1. So, like, for example, the 5, what this means is, um, hmm. actually, what, what does this mean? It's like, it's 1 or 0 according to whether, um, That's actually really weird. So if m is either 2 or 4 mod 5, then it bumps up. And otherwise, um, it doesn't bump up. I guess I should keep writing these, right? And see what happens. Um, so, like, meanwhile, 3m plus 3, 10. Will correspond to... There will be... 3 values... three six nine mod 10. I think are the critical ones. Okay, okay, I see what's going on now. Um, in general, um, for k greater than 1, It's it's like you take the you take the 
residue mod case grip plus one. Um, and if it happens to be a multiple of K, that, that feels so weird to say because it's like you're actually looking at the remainder. Then it's one, and otherwise it's zero. Yeah, so okay, in particular, um, for any odd M, the M floor will change. And the question is, are there any other... Oh, actually, if M is not prime. Change. However, if M is not prime, uh, let P be... Uh, let D be an odd divisor of M, which is larger for which D is at least the square root of M, which is always possible for a non-prime then the dth floor will change. Yeah! Okay, that's just it, right? This should just work. <sighs> yeah, I think that's just it. Um... Yeah. Euclid 10. What do the 10 and 9 mean? Are those grade levels or problem numbers? Actually, actually I guess if you just saw both 10 and 9 on the test, then that, that implies they're not grade levels. They're problem numbers. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Um, What, okay, wait, what does the C mean, actually? Part C. Oh, this is, I see. Oh, uh, interesting. Okay. Okay, so notice that for any n, we have, uh, um, I, I, I'll, I'll use n. Fix an all composite integer m and let ak be the. This means that f m plus 1 plus f m is equal to a1 plus a2 plus. Claim that when M if M was odd and composite, 
plane. Oh, uh, hang on. What's the smallest F FM? <laughs> As I was like, what's the smallest R composite number? And it's like nine, and it just looks dumb by nine. Okay, I, and then finally, uh, F2 minus F1 is like... Yeah, gotta not drop M equals one. No, this is this is M equals this is M equals one. Yeah. Proof, um... Is this contest on AOPS? Like, can I find Euclid? Um, uh, oh, did I write square D? Or square, no, square root M is correct, right? Uh, oh, sorry, yeah, greater than or equal to. No, because the, the thing, the reason is like, um, like, it's like M equals, M, M is a multiple of K after taking mod K squared plus one, which is why it's so weird. It's like you, because it doesn't, normally you don't like, think about divisible by K after you take modulo something that's not, that's like co-prime to K. I would be like saying like, you know. You you like took the last digit of a number and it's like you you care whether the number is a multiple that digit is a multiple of three like it's just like not a natural thing to do because mod ten and mod three don't interact at all um, but that's what this function is it's like after you take mod k squared plus one is it divisible by k and so for the small values of k it's going to be weird because um, you know when you it's just hard to say anything useful about it um, but. That's why we took specifically, um, oops, fuck, uh, how did I do that? That's why we specifically took um, d to be greater than or equal to root m, so that like d squared plus one is bigger than m. That way, taking mod d squared plus one doesn't like, you know, d still divides the remainder.
Yeah, no, the, the, the problem is that when you take mod K square plus one, everything gets screwed up. Unless, like, K, like, that's why we specifically needed K to be bigger than square root M, so that that didn't matter. Uh, what the? Oh, floor is not a defined command, huh? Ugh. Does my script not take those out automatically? Actually, if if so, if it doesn't do that, then that's actually going to cause problems later. When I um, Okay, but real question, like, why is backslash floor just not built in? That seems like it would be a pretty useful built in. Okay, are we still good? Yep, okay, cool. Yeah, I'll just pre-call it, yeah. 